Welcome everyone. My name is Blake and I will be your moderator tonight. Tonight we're joined by senior de designers Renee Susami and Robin Connors of Henry Shine's Integrated Design Studio for a review of the hottest design trends today and suggestions for how to incorporate them into your dental project, into your dental practice at any budget or scale. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to go over some housekeeping. If you have a question, please type it in the box labeled, have a question. Henry Shine is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Welcome and thank you for being with us tonight. I will pass it on to you now. Thank you, Blake, for that great introduction. Um, before we get started on to our topic, I just want to introduce ourselves. Um, your hosts of for tonight's webinar are Robin Connors, one of our senior designers with Integrated Design Studio, and myself, Renee Tusami, senior designer with Integrated Design Studio. Just a little background on our team before we dive into our topic. So Henry Shine's Integrated Design Studio is comprised of, I believe we have 24 designers on our team now, specializing in dental office design. We work in coordination with our Henry Shine equipment specialists nationwide, and we offer an array of services from dental space planning, 3D visualization, equipment and technology specifications and placement, as well as interior design services. So our goal of tonight's webinar is to identify trending colors, materials, and products that we will be seeing in our spaces in 2023. We also will be exploring some current trends in the dental design movement that really focus on wellness, flexibility, technology, and comfort. And lastly, we will analyze varied workflow solutions that really focus on practice efficiency as well as the overall patient experience. So diving into our first portion of our topic, we're gonna co cover colors, materials, and products. So starting off, we wanted to focus on color, and each year Sherwin-Williams launches its color forecast of the year. This is typically a collection of 40 different colors. Um, within this launch this year, um, they really put a focus on kind of our natural interweaving between ourselves and the spaces that we occupy. There's also been a really big shift in the market going from super cool tones that we've seen in the last decade to much more natural um, tones that we would see in nature. Within this palette, um, Sherwin-Williams always launches a color of the year and this year's color of the year is red in point. That's the tone on the upper left-hand corner. Um, it's a very neutral color, but has a lot of hints of rust and almost pink undertones. Robin and I together analyzed the color forecast of 2023, and we decided to select four colors out of this 40 color grouping that we felt would really be usable in the dental office environment. Um, and we will be showcasing these four color palettes next. And also these four color palettes will be utilized in our presentation later on in various renderings. So our first color palette that we put together utilizes that color of the year red in point. And really this is a very natural earth tone palette. Um, overall, the feeling really evokes a welcoming feeling, the use of natural elements and colors, and overall very calming. We feel that this palette is extremely versatile with many design styles from traditional to transitional and to modern. Our next color palette is retro. Um, here we use the Sherwin-Williams Serepe color, which is the bright kind of bold yellow gold tone that you see within this color palette. And over the last couple of years, we've definitely have noticed a push towards mid-century mid modern style. Um, maybe it's kind of been incorporated with the use of furniture, lighting, or artwork. And we definitely feel that in 2023, the use of mid-century modern or retro design is going to really be at the forefront. Um, this palette really is very enticing. It evokes creativity and is inspiring. So I think that 
a lot of these colors and tones and overall design aesthetic will be very much in the forefront of what we're seeing this next year. Our next palette is pastels, and here we've utilized the Sherwin Williams color wallflower. Typically, whenever we think of pastels, we think of a more a space maybe more correlated with a more feminine approach. However, we've been seeing the use of pastel tones used in a lot more geometric and modern approaches. Overall, this color palette is very refreshing, peaceful, and in a way very enchanting. And I think it pairs nicely with an array of different design styles as well. So also very versatile. And our last color palette that Robin and I created is a monochromatic color palette. And here we use the Sherwin-Williams Blue Peacock bright teal palette. And what monochromatic really means is taking one color and playing with the color's hue and saturation to almost create an ombre effect. This palette is very bold, it's classy, it's also dramatic. And we could see this palette being paired with a couple different styles such as glam, modern, or even eclectic. Moving on from our kind of our color trends that we're seeing for 2023, we also wanted to focus on some key materials. Um, our first material that we're going to look at tonight is countertops. Now, countertops is obviously not something new, but we are seeing a lot of really cool and innovative items being incorporated into the countertops and the services that we utilize. Trending still are obviously your quartz, solid surface, and porcelain. Porcelain counters is a product that came out, I'd say about two, three years ago, and there has been a definite um, push in the marketplace for utilizing porcelain counters, not only in a residential setting, but also in a commercial setting. One of the biggest items that's been different in 2023 than past years is Quartz and porcelain countertops are now available in multiple finish options. In the past with a quartz countertop, we would typically only get or have the ability to have a gloss finish. Now they've come out with matte or even a leather look, which can really help change the aesthetic of the space. Another item that's definitely new in 2023 is you know, the use of metallics or even bold colors within the veining of quartz. So the marble look is still very much in the forefront, but they're playing a lot with some of the tones that are making up those veinings. So in the past, we would typically see a neutral tone like a taupe or a gray, and now we're seeing pops of metallics or bold blues and greens. Another trending look is terrazzo. You may be familiar with terrazzo. This was a really popular flooring type back in the 20s and the 30s. And now manufacturers have taken that look and applied it to various um, countertop options. So for the example on the upper, I'm sorry, upper left-hand corner, we have an example of a terrazzo um, counter that's wrapping that desk. And it just has a really interesting modern look to it. Lastly, one thing we're seeing definitely trending in quartz, solid surface, and porcelain is just varying scales. So everything from the very minute veining to the terrazzo speckled look to the over, over large grandiose veining that we see in pieces like Carrera marble. Our next material that we wanted to focus on tonight is pile. Again, just like countertops, not some, something necessarily new. However, what is new and what is trending this year is the way we're utilizing tile. So decorative tile is definitely on the forefront. Um, we're seeing it being utilized in a multiple of different types of applications from wrapping a reception desk to an accent wall, or even as the image on the upper left-hand corner showcases, um, incorporating decorative tile at the front of a fireplace. Some trending looks right now are definitely the handcrafted look. So taking inspiration from handcrafted tiles from Morocco, um, a lot of the larger tile manufacturers have really gotten inspiration from that handcrafted look and now are creating pieces that look chiseled and hand-painted, but at a much uh, better price point than something that would be handcrafted. 
On the flip side of that is a push of geometric and abstract looks. So I think we have a really good collection here of just imagery showcasing some geometric patterns and some more abstract looking decorative tiles. In addition to handcrafted, geometric, and abstract, um, dimensional tile has been really popular and upcoming in the last year. Uh, the image on the far left, lower left hand corner shows a dimensional tile that's wrapping that desk. It really adds a ton of interest, another layer of texture to a space. And lastly, we've really seen a drawback from the standard 12 by 12 or 12 by 24 floor tile and a lot of manufacturers are showcasing almost jumbo tiles meaning a 36 by 36 or a 48 by 48. it really could make it a porcelain tile that's trying to replicate stone a natural stone appear to be more realistic um, it also really gives a very modern approach we have a great example of it a jumbo tile shown in the serum rock salt image, which has that desk, um, and that is a 48 by 48 inch floor tile. Acoustical Solutions has been products we've been talking about for quite a while. However, a lot of manufacturers have come out with a lot of innovative ways to use acoustical uh, materials within a space. So as the dental office environment becomes more and more open, we need to find a solution to help combat that noise. So acoustical solutions are a really great go-to to help solve that problem. There's a variety of applications that can be utilized on the market nowadays. A wall application is a great solution. Again, not only does it help combat sound, but it also has a great aesthetic and almost as itself serves as artwork. Ceiling applications are really new and innovative. We can incorporate lighting into these. We can do custom ceiling treatments using these acoustical products. Really the options are endless. And lastly is the use of acoustical dividers. So as an example, you may have an open bay, whether it be a hygiene bay or pediatric bay, and you're really looking for a way to combat that sound. Utilizing one of these acoustical dividers is a great solution, not only for just the aesthetics and the beauty of it, but for the functionality. Moving on to our next material, um, we wanted to focus on woods. So in the last 10 years, we've primarily been seeing the use of a wood grain primarily used in our flooring, whether it be a luxury vinyl wood look, um, you know, or uh, tile. However, we really have seen a much more expansive use of wood within spaces, primarily um, incorporating wood not only on the floors, but also as feature wall treatments like we're seeing on the far left. We're also seeing a big push for using wood grains on cabinetry, which is a lot different than what we've seen in the last decade where the painted cabinetry look was really popular. We're also seeing a big push as well for natural and raw finishes. So good news is if you have any blonde or honey oak trim in your home, in your office, don't swap it out yet because it's starting to trend back into style. In addition to some of those lighter wood grain and wood stain tones, we're also seeing a huge trend of mid-tone to dark walnuts as well as black stain. Living Walls is also a very popular product. Um, biophilic design is definitely still very much in the forefront of a lot of design and architecture that you see nowadays. I think the big push for this was definitely the start of the pandemic when we were all locked into our homes and we really wanted to feel the sense of bringing the outdoors in. Uh, living walls can really create a calming effect. Again, bringing a true natural element into your space can be really inspiring as well. There's a ton of great creative applications from your stereotypical moss wall application that we definitely have seen to now pixelated letters that has you know, your standard letter and you can incorporate moss within that letter in different colors. 
Ceiling treatment is also something that's been new this last year. Um, it's a great tool for wayfinding. Again, just adding an additional architectural element to the space. And one other really cool new product that just has been launched by Scandinavia Space is Pixeled Frame. This product is so cool because you can really take any artwork. So let's say it's the Mona Lisa, for example, and this company will take that image and actually recreate it utilizing moss. So you almost get this like digitized um, artwork piece, if you will. Not only are these products beautiful, but again, there is a functionality to them, such as acoustical. So just like the acoustical products we reviewed earlier, these also have an NRC rating of up to 0.8. What NRC stands for is really the test of how they combat sound. So for example, a sound booth is at a 0.1 or 1.0. Um, so these are getting you to a 0.8. So it really, again, not only offers a lot of really cool aesthetics to the space, but has a functional, um, functionality as well to it. Another really popular material is digital wall treatments. This again has, has been a product that we've seen on the market for the last couple of years, but we're definitely seeing a trend of utilizing this more in dental office design. I think one of the big reasonings behind this is each dental office is trying to stand out between their competitors. Branding has been a really huge um, and impactful way for new dental offices or even existing offices to really sell their story, uh, sell their story of how they care and treat for their patients. And digital wall treatments can really do a great job of helping achieve that. So they offer custom solutions. There's a lot of different applications of how this product can be installed. So it can be installed on the wall, just like your standard um, wall covering or wallpaper would be installed. We can apply it to ceilings. We can apply it to windows. So for example, if you had a, a storefront window and you're trying to get some branding um, to showcase onto that street side, you could use a digital wall treatment to glaze over that existing window. And in, in the interior, we can even apply it to glass. So if you had an existing you know, glass consultation office and you wanna create some privacy, you could utilize one of these digital wall treatment products um, to help go over that existing material. So moving from materials, we want to talk about products. And Robin and I decided to kind of focus some of the products more so on furniture. Um, commercial furniture is obviously a great investment, something that our team always recommends. And we wanted to touch on some pieces that you might think of integrating into your space. So first and foremost are dividers and partitions. A lot of dental offices are really trying to get away from the stereotypical waiting room where we have chairs lined up in a row. I think patients now have a greater expectation of what they want their dental office experience or their visit to be like. And one item that's been really popular is on the patient side is having um, varied waiting options. So Maybe they want to sit in a side chair. Maybe they want to sit in a lounge chair. Maybe they're running to your office after work and they just need to sit in a quiet space for five minutes to collect themselves before treatment. Utilizing dividers or partitions is a great way to, again, help break up a large waiting room to create more privacy, more intimate seating groupings. They're also a very flexible solution as this is something that is movable. It's not something that is fixed to the ground or to the ceiling like a standard um, drywall wall would be. And they're also a great solution for space saving. So in the lower right hand corner, we have an example of a Zintra acoustical product that's also a divider utilized in a bay. They wanted to create privacy, they wanted to help combat noise, and they also wanted something that was aesthetically interesting and pleasing. So utilizing these partitions was a great way to achieve all of those wants. Moving on to products again, we wanted to discuss bench and booth seating. This is something that's been on the forefront more so and something that our team is really trying to implement in a lot of our designs with new offices or remodels. Uh, we feel that utilizing bench or booth seating really can help elevate the overall aesthetic 
in the waiting room. It's also a great solution in areas on, that are not the waiting room, such as maybe guest seating in a, in a bay or um, even utilizing bench seating in your staff lounge. This can provide a lot of seating variation. As I mentioned before, the patient experience, again, is something we want to focus on and offering varied waiting solutions, I think a lot of patients would appreciate. It's also on the functionality standpoint, great because it can really help maximize your space. I love the in image um, in the middle with the green booth um, that's been wrapped around an existing column. So here we've taken that existing column that would in most cases be an intrusion and utilized it to help create seating for maybe four to six more people. And overall, it can just really accommodate a wider range of needs. You know, you may have see families from time to time, and instead of having that dedicated love seat that always, you know, mom and child sits on, incorporating the booth seating really allows for a larger demographic to use the seating needs in your space. And lastly, we wanted to focus on private office, business manager, consultation. What are we seeing on the market for desking solutions? So Flexibility really is key. Uh, we always recommend commercial furniture within those spaces versus doing a standard millwork um, desking unit. And the reason for that, again, is flexibility. These pieces are pieces that can be switched around, manipulated. If you, you, know, you had a standard L-shaped desk and now you want to bring in an associate, you can easily add on to these pieces. Um, utilizing pieces like we see, furniture groupings like we see in the lower right-hand corner where we have a shared private office. Um, we were able to utilize a storage unit to not only create two seating areas, two desking areas for two practitioners, but also create storage and privacy. Another really big trend, again, is height adjustability and ergonomics. In the dental practice, we really always try to focus on ergonomics of the treatment room, but there's a lot of other people within working within your office who also need those same ergonomics. So incorporating height adjustable desking for your business manager or consultation or HR manager, or whoever you have that's going to be at a desk job for eight hours a day. Um, really thinking of the task seating that they're utilizing and ensuring that you have good lumbar support, adjustable arms, um, and really making sure that whoever is working in that space day in, day out has great ergonomics to help support them and really increase their overall productivity. And that's um, my portion of the presentation, really focusing on design trends. And I'm going to pass it over to Robin, who's going to focus on practice trends, really diving into space planning and architecture. Thanks, Renee. So looking at the layout of dental offices, we're seeing four over, overarching trends that have been influencing these changes. The first is wellness, which encompasses things like accessibility, patient education opportunities, and infection control considerations. The next is flexibility, so looking for spaces that have multi-purpose or accommodating functions. Comfort, so providing a sense of personal space, privacy, trust, and engagement for patients, while also emphasizing aesthetics and providing amenities. And then finally, technology. In today's world, everyone is somewhat connected um, to technology. And we're finding that often people are expecting that to flow into their healthcare and even um, their dental care needs. So allowing patients to have a sense of connection and control while also utilizing the current technologies you have in your office as marketing opportunities. So looking at our first space that we've seen transition is um, waiting or reception. So really, you know, we've seen these become a lot smaller, partially due to the pandemic and really not allowing, you know, several people to be in one space at a time, forced um, individuals to have, you know, in-car meeting or moving them back to the treatment room. And we found that 
It's allowed other spaces in the practice to grow. In addition to the pandemic, we've seen a rise in real estate costs and also just the availability of spaces. So having a more minimized streamlined front waiting and reception area can really allow for other functions in the office um, to be included. So with these smaller waiting rooms, we find that there are some you know, considerations such as providing virtual or self-guided check-in options whether that be online or through an app on a patient's phone, or even providing a couple of check-in kiosk stations that allows for the front business decks to maybe min be minimized to just one staff member, um, or you know, possibly if needed at all. We're also seeing that the aesthetics of that front space is becoming even more important as this is the First impression the patient sees when they walk into your office, so making sure that you know they have a memorable experience and design details and intentions are clear. And with this being a smaller space, it usually makes it a bit more affordable than it would have been for really large waiting areas. So looking at this setup in 3D, we can see kind of that smaller reception area with the more concierge style front desk supported by check-in kiosks off to the right. This palette we utilized is part of that monochromatic style that Renee mentioned earlier, accented through some um, nice wall covering and variating um, paint tones. And then we can also see there's a variation of furniture with the bench seating, some lounge chairs, and then providing amenities through a beverage station. So moving past waiting and into another space we've seen transition over the last couple of years is consultation. I think that it can really depend on the practitioner, you know, whether they need a designated larger consult space or if they've been kind of removing them all together, we found a couple of different options that um, we're seeing utilized. The first is considering um, for, for practices that do need a more designated consult space, providing an area that's more of an experience for new patients or even patients that are having the more expensive treatment planning come up. So here we can see a consult room that has a more standard desk, but also has a, you know, small exam chair that could be utilized for some types of imaging, scanning, or even some practice photography. Next door, we have an imaging alcove, so it's easy to move from, you know, consultation conversation to take images, possibly even move back. And then across the hall, we have a treatment room that could function as a larger exam um, if needed, or even moving straight into um, different types of treatments. What's nice about this scenario is we've also included a digital lab up front to help showcase that technology that practice is already putting into use and advertising that to those new patients or those patients that are looking for um, a little bit more of intensive treatments. So here we have a 3D image of what that looks like, kind of taking a peek through the digital lab into that um, treatment or exam space. Again, accented with that monochromatic color palette through uses of accent colors, um, through paint and wall covering, and even a, a fun accent floor. And then across the hall, we have that consultation space um, with the adjacent imaging alcove. So another solution that can help with different types of consultations, but isn't a designated room for those who don't need it, is considering utilizing the treatment corridor. So here we have a line of treatment rooms, and then alcove off the corner, out the corridor across the way, is a couple of different things. We have computer stations, we have benching, and in this case, we have some hand washing stations. What this allows is several different functions. So first, the benching can be utilized for guest seating, especially if you're minimizing that waiting up front. Um, you might have patients being accompanied by guests that you don't necessarily want in the treatment room. They can be located somewhat nearby, but out of the way. 
Another consideration with offering benching along the hallway is for patients that have um, you know, mobility issues and they might need a spot to rest um, in order to move comfortably throughout the practice, this can be able to serve that function. And then with the computer stations, this can be a great option to use for some quick conversations between the patient um, or a staff member. Also utilizing it for a reappointment or even self-guided checkout that helps to minimize that front business office while also pulling patients out of treatment rooms so we can have those rooms start to be turned over quicker. So here's a 3D view of that. We have those computer stations intertwined with benching um, and accented through some of the um, acoustical solutions that we mentioned before. We have Zintra sticks that kind of go up and over into the rear treatment hall, providing a nice detail while also helping with the sound properties of that hallway. So another version of consultation, um, somewhat similar to the corridor experience that allows for a little bit more comfortable sit-down conversation is considering a consultation outcome. Again, this is something that's probably more for quick conversations, reappointments, or even some checkout opportunities, and is a much smaller footprint than a designated consultation room. Um, and can really be placed wherever it makes the best sense within the practice. So here we have an image of that consultation alcove, this time accented with the retro color palette we mentioned um, through some bright use of small paint colors, um, and then also showcasing a, a floor transition that helps to delineate you know, the consult space to the hallway. And then our final consultation dedicated space is looking at proposing more of a multi-purpose use. So switching out a traditional um, consult desk with something more collaborative might allow for functions like patient onboarding and consultation, but also a space for private checkout, especially if you've minimized that front area, a finance space, um, looking at providing a chair that can be used for photography or scanning. Um, this space also could be equipped for infant exams for those knee and knee procedures. And then finally, utilizing this space for cases where you might need a private waiting space. So once again, if you've minimized that front area, this can be a great space for a family that comes in that has several people and might be a little bit louder. You can put them in here so they feel more comfortable. Um, with them just themselves, while also letting the other patients in the waiting room um, feel more comfortable as well. This is another great solution for a patient that comes in that might have some sensory issues or overstimulation issues. They can have a private space when their treatment room isn't necessarily ready. So it really allows for the function of this space to transform as the need arises. So here we have a 3D view of that multi-purpose space. Um, in this case, the retro palette is really coming across with some of that custom um, wall treatment with that smile bright, which provides a really fun look that can be a great um, highlight to use for social media like Instagram, Facebook. So moving away from specifically consultation, but looking at some other amenities you can provide patients within your practice is um, considering a consult, um, considering an amenity space. So here we're seeing that doctors are bringing in specialists such as massage therapists, dermatologists, people that do Botox, uh, or even even having designated spaces for functions like teeth whitening as an added service that they're able to provide to their patients and sets them apart from competitors. A great thing about this particular setup is we're still incorporating a traditional dental chair. So if the need arises, this space can easily be used for dental exams and consultation, as well as an overflow hygiene treatment space. So here we have 
space with that retro color palette really coming across in the vibrant dental chair accented with a textural wall covering. And then within this space as well, we've highlighted that pixel art installation that really comes across with that retro colors while adding some interest um, to the overall space. So looking more specifically at treatment rooms, uh, we found that patients are really looking for a sense of comfort and belonging within those spaces. I mean, that's where a lot of the anxiety can, can be housed. So allowing them to feel comfort by having a space to put their belongings, offering an opportunity for a guest to come in, um, or even you know, after treatment is done, if there's a conversation that needs to happen between provider and patient, allowing them to get up out of the dental chair and sit more normally on a guest chair or a bench really can help that sense of comfort and wellness. Another consideration if you're looking at providing guest seating is a chair versus a bench. The bench you can have for additional storage for dental supplies. So here is a 3D view of that space. Moving into that pastel color palette here with some fun wall covering as well as some accent wall colors. Um, which is really complemented well from a more neutral dental chair upholstery. So another type of treatment room we're seeing come up more and more is a larger multi-purpose treatment room. Um, by incorporating one of these rooms, you can have several different functions that you're now able to accommodate. One, with these, these rooms being larger, they tend to be a bit more accessible for those that have mobility aids, such as wheelchairs or scooters. Uh, we can also equip this space to have a table and some chairs. So you can have consultation and treatment um, within that same space. This naturally also provides some guest space, whether it be for families or a caregiver. And then finally, having a larger space like this often allows for some specialty treatments to be incorporated into your practice, whether it's surgery or other specialties that might have additional equipment needs, there's space for those to be um, brought in and moved around. So here is a view of that um, more multi-purpose treatment space. Again, in this case, set up in more of a consultation style. So the final treatment room um, trend that we're seeing is considering flexible treatment rooms. So in this case, it's taking a more standardized room, but offering an opening between the two that can be open or closed um, to control privacy. So with an open um, space, we're seeing this is a great function for families that might have more than one patient coming in that day. They're able to be next to each other, a parent to a caregiver, can move freely throughout the space and be accessible. Another function that this is accommodating is if you're considering bringing in a specialist, like an orthodontist or a pediatric dentist, they're able to open these up and have the space flow more like a bay, um, which is kind of more traditional in their practice. And here is a 3D view of that flexible treatment style with the view between the operatories. And then moving into the more staff clinical space, lab is a, is a big one that we've seen quite a change over the past couple of years with new technology being introduced. Uh, these technologies are great to showcase to patients um, that come to your practice, but we don't necessarily want to be showcasing some of the dirtier, louder lab work that's traditionally housed within that space. So in this instance, we were able to divide the wet lab within a room that has a door, and then the digital lab is nice and adjacent that is able to house those you know, technologies that we want to showcase, as well as the computer design station that patients can walk by and see and really kind of acknowledge the different types of advancements you're housing within your space. 
So here is a 3D view of that space. You can see that wet lab is really tucked away while the technology is being showcased. Here we utilized that new um, natural earth tone palette through some wall colors as well as artwork. And in this case, we've also showcased some more of those acoustical center products, um, those hexagons kind of create an interesting pattern and look and focal point while also helping to support the overall acoustics of the space. Moving into more clinical spaces, um, really looking at storage, we're finding that there are more and more requests for carts or mobile technologies, but this all hasn't always been at the forefront of the designing phase. So often these um, units were kind of just stored in open hallways, so they kind of get in the way of overall flow. Um, the office or possibly be stored away in a closet where they're not as easily accessible. So really thinking about the type of technology that you want to implement them into your office and how we can best support their use and efficiency. Um, in this example, we have sterilization. Right outside of sterilization is an alcove that has a workstation where we can do ordering, have some of those consult complications conversations, and underneath we have the carts tucked away and easily accessible to treatment. Across the way is more of an open alcove that provides space for some of the other digital mobile technologies such as scanners or microscopes um, that also need a duck in place. So here's a 3D image of sterilization, workstation, cart parking. Uh, you can see in this case, we're still able to keep sterilization open, which has also been another trend throughout the past several years. So you can kind of see how this is just a nice central hub that looks clean um, and is worthy of being a part of the patient experience. And then finally, taking a look at providing some staff amenities, but having them being multi-purpose to the more public zone as well. So here we've taken a what would be a, a large staff room and divided it up to provide some different opportunities. So we have the traditional open team space with more of the, the staff table and the kitchen. But then underneath, we have three different rooms that are set up as more of private team space. So these are great solutions for, you know, if you have a, a specialist or an associate that comes in from time to time, they need a private workspace, but you don't necessarily want to designate a whole office to them. This can house that function. It can also work for staff members that need some private heads down workspace, or maybe they just have a private phone conversation. Uh, it can work for things like teledentistry. Um, as well as some small conference space um, for staff members. These rooms can also help support the um, patients or more of the public experience by being utilized for consultation, um, private checkout, even nursing rooms. Um, so really allowing what would be, you know, one function within the square feet kind of way more. So here we have a view from that public side into these smaller rooms um, that could be utilized, you know, in the multitude of functions we talked about before, accented through some digital wall covering in the um, more collaborative um, lounge chair room, and then also some color pops in the furniture within that more conference space. So with that, um, just to review a couple of topics that we kind of brought up today. Overall, we're seeing warmer um, tones as trending, kind of moving away from some of the coolers and gray tones, as well as some really cool products that we wanted to showcase in the event that you're building a new office, considering your modeling or expanding. We wanted to emphasize the focus on patient experience through a lens of wellness and comfort. To highlight you know, the, the capacity to use multi-use and flexible spaces to really enhance your practice efficiency. And finally, to showcase um, some different ways that you can showcase your digital technology to really 
set yourself apart from competitors and make that connection between you know, what you're doing for a patient and what they see. So with that, um, that was our presentation. Here we have all of our contact information, um, but I think we're gonna open it up for some questions. Great, thank you both so much for an amazing presentation. As mentioned, if you have a question, please type it in the box labeled have a question and we'll get right to that. So we have one here. Um, my current space is mostly gray tones. I would like to warm it up, but I don't want to change our existing finishes. What do you think is the best approach to do so? I can answer that one, Robin. <clears throat> Um, if you're really looking to kind of keep everything existing within your space, but you want to warm it up, um, some quick solutions could be incorporating artwork that has some of those warmer tones that you're looking to incorporate. Another solution could be taking a look at some of your existing decorative lighting fixtures. So maybe swapping some of those out and bringing in some warmer metals. This might be a really quick way to kind of help soften some of those cool tones. Another solution would be within decor. So if you have existing furniture that you wanna keep, throwing in some throw pillows or even a throw blanket just to kind of help bring in some additional tones might be a great solution for you. Great, thank you so much. Another question is, is carpeting still popular in dental offices? Yes, we still spec carpet all of the time. Um, you know, and speaking to acoustics, it definitely, there's a difference between, you know, the vinyl and the carpet. So utilizing it for spaces like waiting or the business office can really help combat, you know, some of that echoing that can happen, as well as just provide some interest uh, that isn't you know, all the same point at the space. So we do quite a bit of carpeting sets, uh, even in hallways, that can really help add that design intent. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, do you guys do virtual or in-person consults for office makeovers? So all of our services are done remotely. Um, Robin and I and the rest of the team are based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And yes, it's six degrees here today. So if you're in a warm climate, we would love to come visit you, but unfortunately, no. Um, the benefit is, is we've been doing all of our design services remote for over 25 years. So with the use of technology like Microsoft Teams or Zoom, um, we really have a great program to design remotely. Um, if you're interested, you can contact us by the uh, email address. I believe there's the email address listed, right, Robin? On our, <laughs> I'm not sharing anymore, but I think oh. we'll follow up with our contact information as well. Yep. So we can follow up um, after this, or you can go to our website and there's a contact us button and we can get you connected to set up an intro call if you're interested. Thank you guys so much. It looks like we covered everything tonight. Thanks again, everyone for joining and for that wonderful presentation. We did record tonight's webinar and we will we'll email out the recording sometime in the next week. We would appreciate your feedback via our survey that will pop up on your screen shortly. And once again, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Have a great night. Bye.